Welcome back. We're going to look at the curious case of the 1093n plus 1 problem. In the 3n plus 1 problem, we conjecture that every number goes to 1. And in the 5n plus 1 problem, we conjecture that almost no numbers go to 1. Obviously, 2, 4, 8, 16 go to 1. But it seems like almost every other number runs off to infinity, except for a few small ones stuck in cycles. And the same thing for the 7n plus 1 problem, where we also conjecture that almost no numbers go to 1. But we can't prove any of that. Even the simplest thing, like 3 goes to 22, 155, 1086, 894 million, and so on. It just keeps going and going as far as anyone's cared to track it. But who knows, maybe it hits some giant power of 2 and comes crashing back to 1. Same thing for the 9n plus 1 problem, the 11n plus 1 problem, and so on until we reach the 1093n plus 1 problem where we can finally prove for sure that almost no numbers go to 1. Okay, let's start with the 3n plus 1. Here's the spine, all of the powers of 2. If a number correct connects directly to the spine, like 5, we say it has height 1. That means it takes one step to get to the bottom. In this video, we're going to ignore the even numbers when we count. Looks like 21 and 85 also have height 1. And we can make a formula for all the height 1 numbers. x has height 1 if we multiply it by 3 and add 1 and get some power of 2. Solutions are of the form x equals this. Now, if an odd number connects to 5 through some even numbers that we don't care about, then it has height 2. For example, 3 and 13 both have height 2 we can characterize a height 2 number like this. We multiply it by 3 and add 1, divide by 2 some number of times, resulting in another odd number of height 1, which we multiply by 3 and add 1, which results in a power of 2 and a quick trip to the bottom. We can simpl simplify this equation down to here, and uh, obviously one solution to this equation is x equals 3. 27 plus 5 equals 32 is a power of 2. So 3 is an example of a height 2 number. There's an infinity of height 2 numbers, uh, and they all take this form. For now, I'm going to gloss over the other height 2 numbers, like 13, which go through uh, might go through several even numbers to reach 5. Uh, we'll worry about that later. OK, so the same thing for 7 and plus 1. 9 is a height 1 number because it connects directly to the power of 2 spine. 9 times 7 plus 1 is 64. And 5 is a height 2 number. Okay, now we get to the 1093n plus 1 problem as promised. So let's find a number first that connects directly to the spine. Let's see, 1093 times what plus 1 would equal 128. Now, 128 is too small. Actually, you have to go up this spine for 364 vertebrae. Uh, and then uh, you can find the smallest height 1 number that connects to the spine. And if you go up another 364 vertebrae, you can find the next height 1 number. How about height 2 numbers? Well, there aren't any, not a single one. And if there aren't any height 2 numbers, then there's no way for any of the other numbers to get to the bottom. So if we start with a number like 3, it goes to 3280, 3 million something, 3 billion something, we can be sure it'll never come back to 1. How do we know there aren't any height 2 numbers? OK, let's take the equation for height 2 numbers from 3 and plus 1 and modify it for 1093. OK, so here it is. And it turns out that there's no x that satisfies this equation. And for a super weird reason, that 1093 is the first number where 2 to the n divided by p equals 1 exactly when 2 to the n divided by p squared equals 1. I was amazed to find that out through brute force search. And we can use that fact in step D of this proof. Step A, we, let's assume that there is a solution with x. Um, and we can rewrite it here um, in mod 1093 squared, rewrite it A here, and then uh, 2 to the n equals 2. This is where we're using the property above. And that contradicts b. So there can be no solution to this. 
So I searched for all the other numbers that behave like 1093, and I found uh, uh, the number 3511. So the 3511 in plus one problem is also solved. And then uh, I googled 1093 and 3511, and it turns out they're both called Weiferich primes, which is what mathematicians call numbers with this property. And they're the only known Weiferich primes. Uh, are there other ones out there? Sorry to say, nobody knows. It's another unsolved problem in numerology. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode about the 1093 n plus one problem and appreciate the weirdness of the number 1093. See you next time.